Welcome, and follow me as a Samsung Galaxy Flip 7 Fair, and today I will be showing you how you can go through the setup process of this phone. So when you put it up the first time, you should be presented with the same screen that you can see on my end uh, with different languages just telling you welcome. And you want to click right here on this uh, button. Then find your desired language, which for me is selected almost the correct one. I would uh, never want to be uh, considered as a UK, so uh, yeah, bye bye. I like my freedom, uh, unlike the UK government um, that claims they have freedom of speech, but they don't. Okay. Um, so anyway, I'm gonna select anything else. Uh, US probably is going to be always better. Uh, if you want, I would say probably some better rights, you might want to select something that is based in the European Union. Uh, though I, although there is no actual like region selection right here, so I don't know if that would have any kind of changes. But anyway, we're gonna move on. There we go. Uh, and this allows us to insert a SIM card and connect to mobile network. You can skip this if you want to. Uh, then we have the for your review, which we have a user agreement. You do need to select this one first and ignore anything else. There is no reason you should give Samsung any more freedom to, to do what they want um, with your data, apart from what they are literally forcing you to. So this is the one that they're forcing you to. Uh, the sending diagnostic data. Yeah, don't select that crap. Moving on, we have uh, easy setup with another device. So if you have another phone and you, for instance, unlock it, let me just do that to my phone. Boom, it shows up right here and you can see uh, it tells me that I can sign up and basically it allows me to move over things like the Google accounts, applications and so on to this device with just a single click. Now this is, I believe, going through the cloud so it's not actually moving over the data that i have right here it's moving over the things that are stored on the cloud so if you're a privacy person and you don't do that like i so i don't have photos on cloud i don't have contacts on cloud really i keep everything locally that's why i took a half a terabyte device this will basically mean that you're not really transferring over shit. so just wanted to put that out there so I'm going to set it up manually. There is a different way you can move over using, for instance, a cable or uh, or just wirelessly uh, by connecting uh, the application, the smart switch app that Samsung comes with. If you have another Samsung, it also comes pre-installed there and you can just kind of connect these two devices and transfer over the data like it's that. This will be the physical kind of transfer of the data instead of the cloud one. Anyway, uh, here we have the connection to Wi-Fi. Now, before we had the mobile network uh, page, uh, with a sim card which i chose to skip here we have the wi-fi which is a second way of connecting to network in your case if this device is completely new straight out of the box sealed box you will not be able to skip connecting to network because why the hell would you be able to choose how you're gonna set up your own phone which you paid for that's up to samsung to decide not you so first time around they will literally force you to sign into network either through mobile or uh, wi-fi and if you can't well, you can't use your phone then. Um, I already set it up before and this is after a reset, so I can skip it actually because it already had the initial setup. Uh, but uh, even though Samsung is trying to bullshit here uh, and just absolutely blatantly lie, uh, giving us things like uh, set it, that Wi-Fi is required to set up an eSIM. No, it's not. F off. Next, uh, connect to the internet. Well, no shit, Sherlock. Um, Wi-Fi is needed for internet. Who would have thought? Next, um, install software updates. Uh, okay, fair enough. I mean, yes. Though you should be able to also download them on, for instance, pen drive, plug it in and update it that way. Uh, but, you know, uh, again, just bullshit here. And uh, use device protection features. Again, another blatant bullshit from, from Samsung. It you don't need internet to, for instance, select pen pattern or password. What you need it for, most likely, is their Samsung Knox bullshit, which most of us don't use because it's absolutely fucking horrendous. Uh, so, yeah, this page shouldn't even be showing up realistically, and what you should be seeing instead is that without network, any kind of network, you won't have the Google login page to show up through the setup process, you won't have date and time. Uh, be set automatically and you won't be able to get software updates without network. That's what you're supposed to give us Samsung, but 
God forbid you do your job right here. At least I'm here to do it for you. So, uh, moving on, here we have the protection, which Samsung claims you can't have without network. You know what? Continue. Well, would you look at that? Now we have a pattern without network connection. Anyway, uh, moving on, we have Google services like location scanning and sending user and diagnostic data. Uh, if it sounds like it's uh, just, uh, you know, things that remove your privacy, that's because it, they are. And furthermore, they're from Google, and if you turn them off, uh, I can tell you that they mean very little to Google. If these options actually mattered, uh, you know, companies, corporations wouldn't be in antitrust lawsuits. <laughs> allegedly. Oh, actually, no, that's not really allegedly, but um, yeah. Um, Another thing that you might notice is, for instance, uh, things like uh, scanning and some other tra uh, trash right here. Uh, location, specifically location. It's supposedly, if you turn that off, uh, no one should know where you're located at, but that's not how it works. Um, so it's still gonna triangulate your location through whatever means it possibly can. So yeah, you never actually aren't being tracked, even though your location is supposedly off. And another thing that kind of uh, cements that kind of bullshit is if I grab my phone right here um, if you noticed in Android when your microphone is enabled you have a tiny little green dot somewhere right here next to the battery or just a straight up icon of a microphone and just to showcase this there is the microphone it's listening to me obviously now it's a green dot which just disappeared now, supposedly right now microphone isn't listening to me. That's what the icon suggests, right? No mic enabled, therefore it shouldn't listen to me. So, how is it that when I say, okay Google, it now listens and it knows that I said it. Now it needs a fucking microphone to know that I said it, therefore it's always on. So, uh, I just wanna point that out because things that you might expect to be certain way, I uh, usually are not. So uh, things like the location right here and stuff like that means absolutely shit. Uh, it, it, it's absolutely useless and you can turn all of this off and pretend you have privacy, but you don't really. And furthermore, if you actually wanted to have privacy before on Samsung's, uh, just Android generally, you had a mode in uh, the in developer options to turn off all the sensors on the phone, which kind of made it semi-useless. I mean, you could still use applications, uh, but in general, it removed a lot of usability because you would have no internet, no location, no microphone, no camera, no stuff like that. This is something that you could turn on and off uh, with a toggle. Uh, yeah, that feature is now gone. It was in developer options, but it's no longer present there because having privacy? Are you crazy? Anyway, um, next we have Samsung services. Now, I love how they're calling this services. Um, you mean uh, blatant violations of privacy. That's what I would consider this to be. Um, so the first one actually isn't a uh, really privacy violation I would consider, but um, it is just an absolute garbage feature. I recommend turning that off. It's auto blocker. What it does is basically try to block anything that Samsung deems uh, that they don't want you to do. Uh, which is, for instance, install APKs from uh, sources that they don't recognize, which that would mean anything that is outside of something like Play Store or Samsung Store. If you downloaded it, yeah, you it won't let you install it unless you turn that trash off. And it has some other options in here as well. So I just genuinely recommend turning that off. It doesn't protect you in any, any way. Uh, and it's just an annoying piece of trash right there. And then we have the, like I said, the mm, kind of like uh, remove your privacy kind of thing, customer customization services and personalized data intelligence. Yeah, if it sounds convolutively uh, like something that spies on you, it's probably because it is. So turn that off. Next, we have choose your display mode uh, or theme more like. So we have light and dark mode, choose whichever one you want. And when you select it, it automatically switches. Moving on, we are basically done, I think, which I want to point out without internet, we actually won't need to connect to Samsung account and it doesn't actually show up anymore, which is pretty nice. Now, before we are finished, Samsung gives us the last little tidbit of information because you purchased a uh, 
nearly, well, not nearly, but over a thousand dollar fragile device, which is as fragile as UK's Ego. Um, so there's a couple of things that come with that fragility. Um, so number one, uh, don't try to you press your fingernail onto the display because it's, uh, like I said, as fragile as UK. Uh, so it might damage it. And obviously that would kind of break, could break your display, the internal one. The, the, the cover one is still glass, so you should be safe. Uh, also, because of uh, its fragility, you shouldn't put anything between it, like credit cards, keys, and so on. Again, it's plastic, so it will get broken. No matter what the spec sheet says, well, however they are naming uh, this cover right here, it's plastic. That, that's what it is. Next, we have info that this phone isn't dustproof, but it is water resistant. Uh, the resistance here, uh, I want to point out if, for instance, the phone gets broken and uh, they detect that, for instance, there is some chlorine on it, that voids your warranty anyway, even though it's supposed to be resistant to water, it needs to be clean. So if you spilled some bottled water on it, you're fine. If you drop it into pool and it breaks, you're not. So it means kind of nothing here. Uh, next, we have the info about the screen protector. So there is a screen protector on here. Do not peel that off, that voids your warranty. If it starts coming off, which it will, after like six to six months to a year, uh, you want to replace it. You have one free replacement. Uh, before it was as long as the device was, war was on warranty. I guess that costed them too much, so now they just give you a one free replacement and next one subsequent will cost you 50 bucks. Uh, interesting for a device that already costs over a thousand dollars. But oh, uh, oh well, uh, it's Samsung, so we shouldn't really expect too much from them. Um, now, there is a couple things that you need to know about this. Uh, when that screen protector starts peeling off, when it, and it will, uh, eventually, you want to replace it. Because if you don't, and it just peels off to uh, whatever standard Samsung considers to be uh, bad, they will void your warranty for not replacing it. If, if you peel it off yourself, it, it, your, your warranty is voided. So... Uh, anything associated with the screen protector, if you do something with it, it voids your warranty. And if you don't do anything with it uh, for a pro prolonged period of time, it also voids your warranty. And voiding your warranty could be used, for instance, if your screen is peeling off the, the protector right here, which usually will be right here where the phone is folding. Um, and for instance, your cover display breaks on its own, not from like dropping or anything like that, it just stops functioning. Uh, they can use the peeling screen protector as the grounds to void your warranty and not replace the, pr the cover display uh, under the warranty. So when it starts to peel off, get that sorted out as fast as you can. You paid way too much for this to, uh, to them kind of like remove responsibility of fixing it when eventually you will need to get it fixed. And you will. Uh, hopefully you will need to get it fixed when it's still on warranty but there's a chance that you might be past it. Uh, and I'm speaking from experience, though I managed to get it on warranty. And uh, and I was very lucky with that, when I had a fold. So I, I won, uh, but plenty of you with the folding display will not. So I just want to throw that out there. When something starts happening to it, get it sorted as fast as you can. And the last info is about the magnets in the device uh, for the closing. Uh, obviously, keep it away from anything that can be affected by them. Anyway, moving now on to the last page, which is the you're all set up. We can click on home and this will take us to the home screen. And there we go. So if you found this very helpful, don't forget to hit like, subscribe and thanks for watching.